Hello everyone, this is Swamiraj at this side. Welcome to my channel. Today we will be discussing about the low-level design of library management system. Without further ado, let's get started. In this video, we will be completely focused on finding out first the requirements of the system. Then we will be defining the actors based on the requirements of the system that we define. Then we will be writing the use cases for all those actors. Once we have done these, then we will start with our use case diagram. In the next video, as always, we will be using this use case diagram as the base to actually build the entire code for the library management system. So stay tuned and watch both the videos to get the complete context. As you can see in the screens, I have listed down a set of requirements that are needed to be done in order to completely code a robust low-level design for a library management system. Let us go through one by one all the use cases mentioned here and then uh, we can identify the actors present here. We can identify the use cases that these actors will be performing and we can identify several independent components of the entire system. As I have already mentioned in the previous video, the requirements can be divided into two parts. One is a word. Second is a noun. The requirement that is a verb is basically used to define a particular use case for a particular actor. On the other hand, the requirement that is a noun is actually used to define a particular component of our system. As and when we will encounter such requirements, I will highlight what requirements are what so that it becomes completely clear to you guys. Let's go through the requirements one by one. If we closely look into the first requirement, it states that any library member be it a customer or a librarian, should be able to search books by their title, author, subject category, as well as publication date. So this requirement has both a verb as well as a noun. Here, searching a book is a verb. As I have already discussed before, a verb is associated with a use case as well as can be associated with one or more actors who will be performing those use cases. So in this particular instance, our actors are customers as well as librarian who are obviously library members and has the ability to search for books. Apart from that, this particular requirement is also a noun because here we also say that searching of books should be on the basis of title, author, subject category and publication date, which essentially tells us that these features, title, author, subject category and publication date are actually features of one particular component, which is books in this case. If we go through the second requirement here, the second requirement clearly states each book will have a unique identification number as well as will have a rack number which will help us to physically locate the book in a particular library. So here as well, this particular requirement is a noun. It, what it states is basically a book which is a component of the system will actually consist of a unique identification number as well as a rack number. If we go through the third requirement here, it states that there could be multiple copies of one book and a library member should be able to check out uh, and reserve any of the copies and each copy of a book is known as a book item. So this is also a noun kind of a requirement which essentially says is that there is another component of the system which is known as the book item. And this book item is of type book. The next important requirement, if we go through it, the system should be able to send notifications whenever the reserved book becomes available as well as when the book is not returned within the due date. So this is also a verb kind of a requirement which essentially tells us that there is an actor, the system or the server, which should be able to send notification, which is the verb defining our use case. And when it should be able to send the notification, it should be able to send notification whenever any reserved book becomes available, uh, whenever the book is not returned within the due date. Similarly, each book and member card will have a unique barcode. This system will be able to read barcodes from books and member library card. So here as well, this is a noun kind of a requirement which essentially tells us that there are two components of our system, which is the book as well as the member card which will have unique barcodes, which the system will be able to read. Likewise, if you go through all the requirements that I have listed down here, each and every requirement can be primarily classified into two types. Let us go ahead and identify the actors of the system. As we can see from all the requirements that are listed in your screen, there are primarily three actors and we can clearly see them performing certain actions, that is verbs in all the requirements that we have listed down. First actor will obviously be the librarian. The second actor will be the customer and the third actor will be the system itself, that is the server. And if we come to the use cases that we have defined for our system, 
They are as follows. The library management system should allow the addition, removal and editing of the book. It should allow searching of the book. It should allow sending notification. It should allow issuing of a book. It should allow reserving a book. Similarly, the system should allow renewal of an already issued book and returning of a book that has been issued. So we will be focusing our use case diagram on the use cases that we have identified here. Let us quickly go ahead and draw our use case diagram. As usual, we start the use case diagram by building the system boundary, which is this big rectangular block that you can see in the screen. Then we define all the actors present in this particular system, that is customer, librarian, as well as the server. Once we have the actors and the system boundaries in place, we will start one by one placing all the use cases that we have defined here and connecting different actors with those use cases. What this particular use case diagram will enable us to do, it will enable us to come up with a more robust and efficient class diagram that we will see in a bit. Let us start by defining the use cases. Here we define the following use cases, add book, edit book and delete book. Obviously, addition of book, editing of a book and deletion of a book should all be part of a librarian because these are the functions that the librarian will perform which essentially says that the librarian class should contain all these three use cases as its methods in it. If we take a look on the next use case, which is search on parameters, this particular use case should be performed by both the customer as well as the librarian, as has been defined in the use case here. So let us go ahead and quickly draw two arrows, one between the customer and the search on params use case block and the other between the librarian and the same. What these two arrows here indicate is basically this particular function, this particular API, so to speak, which will be searching on certain parameters should be a part of a separate class that should be accessible by both the customer as well as librarian. Why I can derive this from this particular diagram is because as we can see here, searching on parameters should be performed by a librarian as well as customer. So it does not make sense to actually keep these functions that is searching on parameters inside of customer or librarian because it will increase code duplication. Similarly, renewing a book, reserving a book and returning a book. All three of them are accessible by both librarian as well as customer. Use case diagram is very important if you actually want to come up with a robust class design. Similarly, checking out of book that is issuing of a book can also be done by a customer and a librarian. Now, last but not the least, we come to sending of notification. This sending of notification will be completely taken care of by the server. Hence, we draw a single line between the server and send notification here. With this, I come to the end of the use case diagram. If you can see, I have modeled all the use cases as well as the actors present for our system into a pretty diagram. Now, we will be using this diagram to code the entire class design for library management system. I have attached this particular diagram in the description below for your reference. In the next video, I will use these concepts that we have established here to come up with a complete code for library management system. I will be dropping the next video in a day or two. In the next video, I will be coding the entire solution for the low level design of library management system in Java using solid design principles and different design patterns. Make sure you stick around to my channel and watch that video. Thank you for supporting my content. Please like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. As always, I have mentioned my Instagram account in the description below. Make sure that you go there and follow me and hit me up with a DM to say whether or not you would like to be a part of my free mock interview series. I will be conducting completely free mock interviews for you guys. That will be it for today. This is Samya Jit bidding goodbye. Das Vidani.